Hey there. So last time we talked about the dot syntax and how you can use tools in a box uh, to do certain things. Like here's the number five, and we can say number dot advance by five, and that will advance the number five by five. It'll make it ten. So we had tools of the int, the integer, to advance by a certain amount. What if we wanted to make our own tools and make our own boxes? Well, that's totally possible, and this is when you really start to become a programmer. You're going to start to truly be able to create things on your own. So last time we talked about properties and methods or functions. A function is something that does something. We already know how to create properties. We did it up here. We created a property number, and we assigned it to 5. We can create our own functions to take a certain amount of code and make it repeatable. We can make a function that runs. So just like this advance by function, we don't know how this works internally, but we do know that it does advance the number by 5. We could even make a function that finds the 299th prime number. And all you would have to do is call get the 200th prime number, and it would do it. Just like the gas pedal in your car, you don't really know exactly how it works which is why car companies and car dealerships can charge you a lot of money to fix your car because you don't know how a car works and they can tell you that something's wrong with it but you know that when you press that gas pedal you know that the car is supposed to go so it's one it, that's why it's so good to learn how to program and two that's why it's so good to learn how to fix cars so let's create instead of a number we'll create a distance that a man has run so far of course this distance number is going to be zero because the man hasn't run anywhere yet. And later on we'll learn how to make a man himself and he will have his own distance. Right now all of these variables kind of exist in the kind of global world. It doesn't really belong to a man. But now let's write something that will make the man run a certain distance. In order to do this we must make a function. In order to make a function we have to use the keyword func. F-U-N-C. This is how it works in Swift. Once you do that, you have to provide a name for your function. So our function, we could call it run. So this is like saying we have a function called run. The next part is to do an open and close parenthesis. I won't tell you exactly what they mean yet, but we'll find out later. Just know that you need them for right now. And then the next part is to do an open and closing curly brace. If you do the open one and press enter, it'll automatically create a closing brace for you. So now all of our functionality is going to sit between these two braces. We could write hundreds of lines of code here, and that kind of makes it saved for later. And we can just call run, and it'll do all of this stuff at once. So all of our run functionality will go into these curly braces. Let's use our functionality to increase the distance by 5. So we'll say distance, and you can see that that's available to us because we created it, is equal to what the distance currently is plus 5. This line is assigning the distance. It's setting the distance to be what the distance currently is plus 5. Now we have some code that is encapsulated in a little box that we can run whenever we want. It's easier to say run than to say distance is equal to distance plus 5 every single time. Plus saying distance is equal to distance plus 5, writing that once is much less error prone than writing it hundreds of times. And imagine if you had a very complicated function that gets the 200th prime number, you know, or something like that. There's a quicker way to write this distance is equal to distance plus five thing. We can say that something is equal to itself plus something by writing plus equals. So we can say instead of this, we can say plus equals five. And this reads like distance is equal to the current distance plus five. Now this will work and it would have worked before but we're making our code even a little cleaner than it was before. And remember if we wanted to put 10 lines of code in this function we could and it would run all 10 lines of code every time we run this. Now we're learning how to save time. So now we can call this run function. Remember we have to do the open and close parentheses. And down here we can find out what our distance is now. You can see that our distance is now five because it was 0 and it added 5. Now we'll run the run function a bunch of more times. And look at that. Our run function is now 35 because we ran the run function a bunch of times until we had 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 until we got 35. And now we have 50. 
So there should be approximately 10 run functions here. That's what happens when you create a function. You're kind of creating a little box of functionality that you can run over and over again. You use the FUNC keyword to say that this is going to be a function. You use the word run to name the function to say we have a function named run. And we also use the open and closing curly braces to put our actual functionality inside this function. In this case, we wanted to increase the distance by five. Before I go, I just want to cover a couple other things that you can do with numbers. You know that you can add them. You can say five plus five, and you can see that that's 10. You can also do five minus five, which makes sense. So you can do minus, and that equals here. You can do five divided by five by using that slash, and of course that equals one. You can do five times five, which equals 25. And you can also do some other really cool math functions, but you need some extra functionality that's built in in order to do this. You can get the square root of five, but before you do that, we don't have the functionality of the square root right here. So what we need to do is we need to import the library that has the square root built into it. So what are libraries? Well, we just wrote a bunch of code that made the guy run a certain distance. We put all of that functionality into our editor here, and we could save that as a library so that later on, we don't have to rewrite that code. We can reuse it. We can go into our library. It's like if you were going to go look for a book in real life, where do you start? Well, if you don't have the book in your house, well, then you need to go to a library to get it because that library has the book that's just like that here. Square root is not in our house, so we need to go to the library. We need to import an entire library. So we're gonna import this library called Coco. And Coco has the square root functionality in it. Now you'll notice that if we type S, Q, and you can see that it already comes up with RT. And if you do control space, then you, that'll give you that code complete. So now this wants a double. So we could get the square root of five, but our five is an integer. We need our five to be a double. So what we can do is we can say 0.0, .0 and that will make our integer now a double. So now we can say distance, and we can see that the square root of the distance, which was 25, is 7.07106, .07 whatever, whatever, whatever because it's what the current distance is. And you can see, oh, that the distance is actually 50. If we took this import cocoa out, you can see that we get an error because the square root doesn't exist. We need to use that entire library cocoa to get the square root. Next time we'll go much deeper into functions. See you next time.